there are some big skills out there that really help you out and I want to talk about a few of them that you might actually even be using a little bit wrong. Hey, welcome back killers. Great to share some more time with you. Uh, if you're new here, I usually talk about builds and stuff like that, but today I'm gonna scale back a little bit and talk about specific skills uh, that go into everybody's passive slots that if you're newer to the game, you probably aren't even that aware of them yet. But if you have been with the game for a while, uh, some of this might not be new to you unless you've been using these skills a little bit weird. Let's just go ahead and get into it. You'll see what I mean. So first of all, I want to address some A slot skills uh, that really just help you do your darn job as a unit setup. So I want to go ahead and give a shout out first to Steady Breath and Warding uh, Breath. Now both of these skills will boost one of your defensive scores whenever you're attacked. And the biggest thing about both of these skills is that they increase your special cooldown by one. So usually whenever you get attacked, your cooldown goes down by one, when well, now it's gonna go down by two every time you're smacked in the face. And you know what, if you're getting hurt, maybe you should get something from it. And I think this is great. Uh, this is put on basically any kind of enemy phase unit anymore. It's a part of what I call the generic crunk defender kit. And uh, you'll see the other uh, companion to this in just a little bit. Uh, but here's one thing that I have noticed is that Ward is, as of recording, really rare. It's only available on a legendary hero as of right now. And the problem is, is that a lot of people are like, oh, well, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and find a Brave Ike, or not Brave Ike, excuse me, a legendary Ike, and sacrifice him because that's, good, that's so much better than Steady Breath. So many times I've seen this and it's been true very rarely. <laughs> I, if you have a unit that has an okay to even good resistance, chances are giving them four more on that stat alone is not going to do a darn thing for you. It just isn't. Now, if you already have a boon on that skill on resistance, and then you give them warding breath, well, hey, now that's a total of eight difference. That's wonderful. I have seen people uh, use Grima, uh, male Grima, so that he has a, that resistance boon, and then giving him warding breath, that is a wonderful combination. That's a good use of the skill. Just saying, oh, well, you know, I'd much rather raise my resistance. There's a reason why resistance is a dump stat, and it's because it is so hard to get enough resistance for things to be meaningful. I, it just is, guys. And I could go on that tangent for hours on end, but we're gonna leave it here because I wanna talk about more skills. The next set of skills I wanna call out are really good uh, aggressive player face skills and they are uh, Swift Sparrow and Attack and Defense Bond. Now the Attack and Defense Bond has been really popular because it gives you one more attack and uh, I said Attack and Defense Bond didn't I? Attack and skill bond uh, has been really popular, and that's because it gives you one more attack and speed over top of Swift Sparrow. Now, whenever you take a look at this, you're like, oh, that's good, because there's so many times that life and death, which is a uh, sort of competitor in this arena, does so much better than the Swift Sparrow. That one extra point of speed, that one extra point of attack does wonder. So you know what, if you have that without the uh, penalty to defenses, that's wonderful. But you can't just slap a bond skill period onto anybody and expect it to always work. Uh, for the most part, I usually keep bond skills on only ranged units. Uh, or uh, sometimes flyers because uh, they have a lot of versatility and can easily do hit and run or drag back uh, because of how uh, their flying ability just ignores terrain. That is where bond skills really shine. A mage or archer can use a bond skill and stay safe while using it. Uh, whereas most melee people are really putting themselves in danger and run the jeopardy of either not getting the use of the skill or bringing a buddy along for the ride. And that's a problem. So <laughs> when it comes down to it, it don't go hunting and using up the rare, rare attack and speed bond skills uh, on melee units. It's just not worth it. Uh, they're found mostly on defensive units, uh, just, I mean, on uh, distant units. Keep them there. 
real quick, if I'm talking about powerful skills, I have to give a quick shout out to uh, Distant Counter and Close Counter. Uh, they are the heavyweights in this category because they give you an extra option to retaliate. They rob your ability to do your job better by giving you the uh, range that you might need in order to actually do your job better. You know, paradox. Uh, so with that, uh, those are great skills to have, and if you're running a very competitive arena team, you're probably going to have them not because they're necessarily the best option for you, but rather you're going to be running them because of the arena points that they get for you, which is yet another topic, but I uh, have to drop that in there. Let's talk about some B skills now. And the first one I want to call out uh, is going to complete the uh, generic Trunk Defender set that I was talking about just a moment ago, and that is Quick Repost. Quick Repost is a really nice skill. Uh, that is going to let you attack twice regardless of your speed as long as you're above 80 percent hit points uh, that is a great skill to have it works out on so many people and it works out even better on people who have a lot of defense if you put it on armor unit they might even get quick repost the second time or if you've just done your matchup correctly they might get quick repost the second time the uh, flip side to this is that now that we have so many super fast units uh, coming into the game People are starting to put quick repost on units that are already otherwise fast. And a lot of people question these uh, these builds because they think it's insane. It's not insane. It is a natural response to the fact that now we have units that naturally, without a boon or bane or anything, come out the gate with more than 36 speed. I still don't understand what IS... Why did you do this? It makes no sense. But that's yet another rant for another day. What I want to talk to you about is, is that no, it's not crazy to put quick repost on somebody who has a lot of speed. You might be able to put that there so that you would actually get to double somebody uh, that's attacking you. The thing is, is that either you're already matching them or they're already doubling you. And here's the, the biggest part is that the largest culprit, the culprit that has been here since the beginning of the game, let alone right now, is red. So if you're worried about all those red sword lords and other speed demons that are wielding that uh, pointy stick, just use Swordbreaker. It's cheaper if you're uh, having a, a different setup where you don't have a pre uh, preference we or pre uh, that, that, where you don't have a where you don't have a legendary weapon or personal weapon then going with uh, one uh, skill that's 200 points is going to be fine for arena points. It's super effective. It stops you from getting doubled. It is usable for longer. There's so many upsides to it. Don't just default to quick repost. Now, I already built this as a list of skills that you put on people to make them just do their darn job right. However, I do want to talk about the chill series of skills. These skills are wonderful, and there's some that are more premium than others. However, if you can get a hold of a chill skill, not only is it going to help out the party for the most part, it does help you out a lot too. There is nothing that makes an angsty Ivra angstier than making sure that she can't give you two Agnol Rastra Red? Why? Regal Astra. What the heck? Maybe if I wasn't too busy paying attention to driving, I'd be able to talk right. By the way, kids, stay in school. That's not the right thing. Um, pay attention. Get my point. Denying uh, units that ability to double tap you is amazing. And so having something like chill speed is great. Also, if you have, like, say, a brave uh, weapon you, uh, user in your group, making sure that chill defense is there <laughs> is just so funny. And if you have a really bulky team that seems to be low on damage output until their special goes off, uh, chill attack is really nice to make sure that nobody is going up and over before you get your special off. So, I mean, really, really evaluate what your options are for chills whenever you get them because you might have a great team to just be able to slap this in on. The last thing I need to call out is guard. Guard is so darn important. It is in so many of my builds because, once again, specials are so important. And if you have the ability to stop people from triggering their special, so much the better. It's just so crucial anymore. Uh, especially if you are in a lower tier arena where, uh, at, where you're not gonna see that much aether, then at that point in time, 
all the units are doing all their damage off of their specials practically. They come up and hit you, you hit them back, you hit them again, and it just completely blows things open. Uh, just stop that from happening by using guard. It is great. Now I'm going to go ahead and talk about some seize skills here. Uh, and for the most part, it's a little bit weird because they're all meant to support other units, but I want to go ahead and start talking about the even and odd wave series. Um, these skills are super rare <laughs> and they're hard to get, but they will buff you in addition to teammates around you uh, if they trigger, which is great. And it's also a really nice magnitude, it's six. So when it comes down to it, it's a great buff uh, for your team and yourself. It is a no-brainer. It only works every other round, which is sort of their shtick, but it is still worthwhile, even the ones that act on odd turns. It's you can stall a turn if you have a good team. Don't give me that garbage about it being bad. You can definitely do it. Uh, so whenever it comes down to it, those are a great set of skills to consider putting on some units for some flexibility. Outside of that, don't forget about all of your uh, emblem buffs that you have out there. Your uh, different uh, hone and ward and goad and fortify. I totally mixed those up. <laughs> and being able to uh, leverage that on your emblem teams. As I already mentioned, if you're still going for high arena points, you can get away with one 200 point skill on a unit. And this is a great place to do it, especially for armor that would probably love to run uh, something uh, like a quick repost and a steady breath. Or would they? Honorable mention at the end of the video. The other thing to worry about, though, is that if you are running mixed teams often, the best idea is to use drive skills. The drive series of skills is really nice because, one, it's an, uh, it's an in-combat buff only. That means Panic Ploy and uh, the like are not going to affect you. It is so, so good. Uh, and I really like that a lot. The uh, other thing is, is that they work on everybody. And if you start stacking these, which they always stack, even with other buffs, then you're going to have an ability to just completely buff out somebody's attack. I don't know how many times it has saved my butt to just consolidate my forces in arena so that everybody gets that all the buffs are all uh, passed back and forth. And it's just magic, pure magic. Now, like I said, an honorable mention, the Armored units do have a very special series of skills called the fighter skills. Uh, in order of introduction, there's wary fighter, uh, then there's bold fighter, and vengeful fighter. These particular skills are really, really great, and a lot of people sometimes will snub wary fighter, but you should not snub wary fighter. Wary fighter is there so that you can create a pacing unit out of an armor unit. You don't need to just kill somebody immediately right off the bat, especially somebody like Effie. What you do is you go ahead and give her a brave uh, lance, then you go ahead and give her a steady breath, and then you give her something like a bold, uh, wary fighter, excuse me. And what this does is it lets somebody come up and attack you, reduce your cooldown by two, you hit back once, you reduce your cool back, uh down by three, and then you can go ahead and proc uh, Ignis the next turn with your uh, with your uh, Brave Lance, or you can go ahead and do it with Slaying Lance. I mean, it's same thing uh, timing-wise, right? And it's, just, it's so fun, guys. Uh, doing combos like that are great because then you just slow the pace of combat, you stop people from coming down that corridor, and it is, it's just crucial. I have several units that have Wary Fighter on them. I don't know if I'd be able to beat half the content that I go into if I didn't have them. The other options are a lot more fun though. <laughs> and uh, the first one I'll talk about is Bold Fighter because this one really uh, is a part of the generic Krunk uh, armor defender kit where you would have Steady Breath, Bold Fighter, or, you know, maybe Warding Breath when, tell me when, plus resistance IV, good job. Whenever you do that, you could use the quick propose seal, which I'm not talking about seals too much. In that kit alone is just dominating. So that's one thing you can do. Also, of course, bold fighter on somebody like anybody has a brave weapon, to be quite honest with you. But I mean Jacob is the uh is the popular choice right now to talk about there. Lastly, the uh, vengeful fighter is it is nice. It has more of a niche usage to it than what you would think it would have and it's so sad but it does just because there's other ways to accomplish that in a way 
but it goes into your B slot and it guarantees the double tap. It is a better quick for post. So if you end up having that and you're trying to just do the more uh, obvious generic crunk fighter uh, dealy, go with Vengeful Fighter. Uh, I did not talk about specials or I didn't even talk about seals too much. If you want to know about some of the damage dealing specials, link right now. Uh, you can go ahead and listen to those thoughts. Otherwise, let me know. Are you upset that I left out the ploys? Are you upset that I left? Well, I'm not going to go through the list of things I considered. I'm just going to leave it right here. Please let me know what your favorite skills are that you think that they need, need to be mentioned. Maybe you guys can rally some support in the comments down below. My name is Deltran. Thank you guys so much. I greatly appreciate all of you. And until next time, take it easy.